In the pay of the CIA, an American dilemma. Here again is CBS News correspondent Mike Wallace. Now we come to the strangest of CIA's penetrations into private groups, a project which in effect used you, the individual American, as cover. It went like this. Young people in communist countries, shouldn't they hear both sides? Radio Free Europe needs your support. If you responded to the many appeals for Radio Free Europe on television, in magazines, even on buses and subways, then you became part of a CIA cover. Correspondent Hughes Rudd. Since the CIA is involved in so many other things, it's probably not surprising to learn that they're also in the broadcasting business, and in a pretty big way. This transmitter outside of Munich is aimed at a vast transmitter complex outside of Lisbon, Portugal, which in turn is aimed at Poland, Hungary, Romania, Czechoslovakia, and Bulgaria. The operation is called Radio Free Europe, and as the sign at the office in Munich says, Radio Free Europe is made possible by American donations. That's true enough, but the overwhelming majority of those donations come from the Central Intelligence Agency. In theory, all the budget comes from private donations, but that budget amounts to some $14 million a year, which is asking a lot even of big-hearted anti-communists. Mówi rozgłośnia Polska, radia wolna Europa. Mandaż temu w żywotopis, aż do doby jego prvního zatčení. Chiar și lumânările, care art foarte decorativ pe mesele din restaurant. Nu își voruncat ei felig, o zăs 24 ore aici, ugarozzuc, o cărătcăzui gulnamșaf be ustaș sărind. O sventu va radio svobodne Evropă predava seacă sutrin. Radio Free Europe, or RFE, broadcasts some 19 hours a day in the languages of its five target countries. Polish, Czech, Romanian, Hungarian, and Bulgarian. Most of the broadcasts are devoted to news and to commentary about the news, news which the various communist bloc regimes suppress at home. RFE estimates some 20 million listeners in the five countries, and in addition to news and commentary, they get American popular music, sometimes with a sort of inadvertent plea for credibility. RFE not only talks, it listens. Specialists monitor broadcasts from its five target countries as well as the Soviet Union, East Germany, and Albania. The staff reads dozens of newspapers and magazines from the satellite countries and puts out news reports based on them, as well as background material for scholars, governments, and reporters. The director of Radio Free Europe in Munich is Chester Ott, a retired United States Army colonel from Portland, Oregon. Mr. Ott, what's the purpose of uh, Radio Free Europe? Well, that's a pretty big question, uh, Mr. Rudd. Our purpose, in a general way, is to promote the freedom of the people who live in our the countries to which we broadcast and the freedom of those countries as countries. Would you say that uh, Radio Free Europe is trying to overthrow the regimes in those Soviet bloc countries? No, no. Uh, this, again, to change the question just a little bit, this leads me to think of, of uh, as you might have asked, if we incite, try to incite people to up to uh, rise up against their governments. No, of course we don't do that. Again, it would be immoral, reprehensible, even criminal of us to encourage people to, to uh, uh, riot or to try to overthrow their governments. We work for evolution toward freedom, not for revolution. Colonel Ott did not wish to discuss the CIA's connection with RFE, nor did anyone else in the organization, although it's been an open secret for years that CIA money was behind the operation. The employees maintain in public that they are supported by those private contributions, and they have some strong character witnesses. President Eisenhower, for instance, said that the uh, Radio Free Europe is a private enterprise which serves the cause of freedom with truth and power. President Kennedy said, I urge my fellow citizens to contribute generously in order to ensure that Radio Free Europe's valuable work continues with full effectiveness. 
And President Johnson said, to perform its task, Radio Free Europe needs the continued support of American citizens. Hughes Rudd, CBS News, Munich. The CBS Television Network says it is now restudying its policy on public service announcements for Radio Free Europe. The network has broadcast no such announcements since February 15th. An NBC spokesman said that network will continue to give time to Radio Free Europe as long as the practice is supported by the Advertising Council. ABC had no comment. The Advertising Council said that its campaign on behalf of Radio Free Europe is over for 1967, and the question of future campaigns will be taken up next fall. Now, in the story of the CIA Foundation caper, we come to the question, what next? As soon as the story broke, President Johnson ordered a halt to all CIA student subsidies. Though within the past few days, another young NSA officer resigned, charging the group still has not made a complete break with the CIA. Other officers deny the charge. President Johnson also appointed Under Secretary of State Nicholas Katzenbach, Welfare Secretary John Gardner, and CIA Director Richard Helms to study CIA's new troubles. The tone of that crucial study, due shortly, may have been tipped by an interim report submitted by Mr. Katzenbach and immediately endorsed by the President. It said, the support provided by the CIA enabled many far-sighted and courageous Americans to serve their country in time of challenge and danger. It is vitally important that the current controversy not be permitted to obscure the value nor impede the effectiveness of competent and dedicated career officials serving this country. Yet the administration is not speaking with one voice about CIA. Just two days before the Katzenbach defense, Vice President Humphrey, speaking at Stanford University, sounded a different note about CIA's involvement with students. Well, this is one of the saddest times that uh, our government has had in reference to... Well, this is one of the saddest times that uh, our government has had in reference to public policy. My own view is that these organizations ought to be free and independent. I regret that they were unable to be that way. I'm not at all happy about what the CIA has been doing, and I'm sure that out of this uh, very singularly disagreeable situation will come a reformation of that agency with closer, su closer supervision of its activities and with recommendations coming to the government of the United States that will confine the CIA to its intelligence gathering purposes and to keep it from being associated directly or indirectly with uh, organizations and bodies of men and women and young people that, uh, do, that are not needed for those purposes. If the administration is speaking with more than just one voice, the Congress is speaking with many. Roger Mudd with some hints as to the legislative outcome of the latest CIA model. Mention the CIA to the average congressman and he will either dodge your question or profess his ignorance. But mention the CIA and academic freedom in the same breath and that hill will explode with reaction. The most extreme criticism came from Senator Wayne Morse, the Oregon Democrat. Let me say to this administration, the CIA is one of the major causes for the development of this great credibility chasm that's developed within American public opinion. And you can't bridge it now. You can't bridge it now unless this administration makes perfectly clear it's going to fill the chasm with the truth. My charge, Mr. Mudd, is that the CIA has corrupted the stream of truth, objectivity, and academic learning in this country. And it must be removed from all activities except the very limited activity of what we know as intelligence activity in the field of spying and espionage and counter-espionage. From Senator Eugene McCarthy, Democrat of Minnesota, came words more softly expressed but equally critical. But there are some people whom you shouldn't use, it seems to me, under certain circumstances.